everybody and welcome back to another chapter of Brightstorm. So today I'm going to be reading to you chapter 9, An Offer. I hope you enjoy. As the days passed, the tiny attic room of Beggings Hall seemed to shrink around them. It rained constantly and they couldn't keep up with mending the leaks in the roof. Parthenford took shelter inside with them, but their few possessions were crammed into the corner and with one mattress too soggy to sleep on, they squished together on the other and fought over the scratchy blankets. Let's go. There's no sense in sitting around here for a message that won't come. Come on, Arthur said. Maudie took a deep breath. <sighs> what is it? Maybe we should face the facts. We haven't heard from Harriet Culpepper. The official start is tomorrow morning. There's still time. Let's go down to the dockyard. Maybe we can stow away on her ship or someone else's. It's getting too close. We need more time to plan. We have to do something. Maudie looked down and twisted a ribbon in her hands. Perhaps we have to come to terms with the idea that we may never know the truth about Dad. I can't believe you're saying that. Arthur couldn't accept it. He never would. We'll find a way. Dad sent the locket back because it means something and we need to find out what. He hated when they argued because it made him feel the threat of being left alone. She was the only one who truly understood him, especially with Dad gone. But I don't see how. There was a tap on the window. Artie, it's Queenie! A great fluffy face pressed against the glass. Maudie opened the window and the cat leapt inside. There's something around her neck. She had a, a silver tube from Queenie's collar and carefully removed a rolled up paper from inside. The cat gave a satisfied purr. Parthena screeched angrily, but Queenie turned her, her nose up, jumped back up to the window and padded nonchalantly away across the rooftop. Now that today is one of our key words, nonchalantly. Dear Arthur and Maudie, I'm pleased to offer you both positions as crew members on the Transcontinental Expedition and Race to South Polaris. Arthur as Cook's help and Maudie as second engineer. The Geographical Society has set the challenge to start at H Chimes promptly tomorrow. We will depart from number four, Archangel Street. Please take extra care until departure. There have been a series of curious incidents and accidents affecting other ships. Yours with faith, Miss Harriet Culpepper. Arthur's heart raced. Harriet wanted them on her crew. They really were going. This is it, Maudie. He felt he could explode of happiness. He whooped and danced around the tiny attic room. Maudie giggled. Bright storms. They froze. Get yourselves down here. Arthur stuffed the note into his pocket. Come on. At least we won't have to put up with this for much longer, Maudie said. Not even. She can spoil my mood. Arthur smiled. They ran down the stairs and heard voices coming from the dining room. A sticky sweet scent wafted towards them, some of the botanical perfume, but it was unlike the scent of flowers in their old garden or the blossoms at Archangel Street. They slowly opened the door. A woman, dressed from head to toe in pale pink, stood beside Mrs Beggins, a distinctive silver brooch on her jacket. Every inch of her seemed perfect. The cut of her skirt and jacket, the precision of her cheekbones, the small sweet nose, her silky braided hair and perfected rosebud lips. It was Eudora Rain Vane. If you could let me speak with them alone, Mrs Beggings, she said, her voice soft and slow. And as the scent carried on the draft, Mrs Beggings flushed red, flustered to be, Mrs Beggings flushed red, flustered to be in such company. Of course, madame. If I'd known you were coming, I would have made the lazy blighters work twice as hard to get the house clean. Just let me know what you need, the little miss, to mend on your ship, and we'll arrange terms. She gave a nod, sovereigns almost replacing her eyes. After the door closed, Madame Vane indicated for them to sit. She sat herself opposite and neatly clasped her pink lace gloves hands. My name is Madame Vane. She paused and smiled. But don't you call me Eudroda. Arthur frowned at Maudie. 
What could she want? Madame Zerain Vane's explorer tattoo showed on her wrist a beautiful winged serpent clutching a ring. On the bottom, a small flying creature, identical to her brooch, clasps a rose. Pardon me, Madame Vane, but what can we do for you? Arthur said. Madame Vane smiled. I told Mrs Beggings that I needed some work on my ship and was looking for young workers to help, smaller crew who can reach further into the holds. I said that I must speak to you confidentially on account of on all account, I require all matters pertaining to my ship. She winked. You want us to work for you? Maudie said curiously. Madame Vane shook her head. No, I'm not in the business of employing children to do my work, like some in the shipyards. Or those dreadful pitch mines. What happened to your father and his crew was terrible. Believe me, when I say I understand how awful it must have been for you. When I discovered you had lost your home, I just had to find you. Her eyes roamed around the dark room. It took me a while to track you down. What a despicable act by your former housekeeper to abandon you. She leant forward. And then I heard that you had responded to Miss, Cup Miss Culpepper's expedition advertisement. How do you know about that? Arthur said. Words get around in the explorer's circles. We... Maudie started, but Arthur nudged her under the table. Don't worry. I won't say a thing to these dreadful people, Madame Vane whispered. But do you really think your father would have wanted you to follow his footsteps and risk your lives? She paused. I understand you wanting to get away from your situation, but I've been thinking. There must be more to it. Arthur thought for a moment. He couldn't see the harm in telling her. Maybe she could help. Dad's hawk, Parthena, flew all the way back and she bought his locket. A locket he never took off. A hawk? Curious indeed. So you think there is more to what happened out there? Arthur shrugged. Maybe. We saw the Prince of Beasts in the snow. There were no survivors. I can assure you we checked the area thoroughly, Madame Vane said with conviction. He couldn't have sent it back to the middle of an attack. So you think he somehow survived? We know the chances are slim, but... Madame Vane leant back in her seat. Conditions down there are harsh, Arthur. And, as you say, his hawk never left his side. So by your own logic, she wouldn't have left him while he was alive. She was right, but it still didn't fit. I know you both want to cling to some shred of hope. We all do. But perhaps the bird found this locket after the attack and somehow made her own way back. Arthur didn't want to hear any more. We should be getting on with our chores. Please, I want to help you. I can pay the rental of a small house on the edge of Lontown. It would be all yours. I can find you both respectable work where people needn't know your name or heritage and you won't need to answer to anyone. Perhaps in the scene master houses of Westside, they're always in need of young apprentices. I'm very well connected down there. Excuse me, Madame Vane, but why would you want to help us? Maudie said. Because what happened to you isn't your fault. And an expedition is no place for a child. We're twelve and two moons, Arthur said. While the idea of a warm place and security was an offer they might never see again, Arthur felt the weight of Dad's locket against his chest. He looked at Maudie. He didn't want to give up. Maudie sighed. Thank you. But we can't accept your offer, she said. Madame Vane gave a gentle nod of acceptance. I understand. But at least think about it. She stood and walked to the door, then paused. Oh, there is one more thing. Miss Culpepper's attempt is rather naive, I'm afraid. She may appear exciting, quite the young explorer, but she has no experience of third continent. She doesn't even have a worthy sk skyship. She hired quite a miserable thing, I'm afraid. If you don't believe me, you should go see it for yourselves. The soda room, down in the docks. I've been preparing and adapting my ship for another attempt since I returned. Arthur and Maudie couldn't accept exchanging a panicked look. The Victorious is far better equipped for the journey than any skyship in the First Continent. I would say that with my recent modifications, it is indeed the best skyship Lontown has ever seen. Perhaps I could show you one day, if you accepted my offer. 
Maudie's eyes were bright with interest. Madame Vane's gaze, gaze settled on Maudie's hair. What a lovely ribbon. I should give you one from my own collection, something with a softer hue to it. I adore beautiful things and textures. Further feathers, silk. She sighed. So, you think about my offer? It might be your ticket back to Longtown Society. A warm bed in a non-leaky room in Westside sounded like luxury. But Arthur knew he could never be happy, no matter where he was in Longtown. Not until he tried to find out what had really happened. Madame Vane read the expressions on the twins' faces and seemed resigned. Independent spirits. I admire that. She opened the door and stepped out into the hall before turning back. I felt it my duty to offer you a way out. You understand, don't you? We really do appreciate your offer, Arthur said. I set off in the morning, so you'll need to act quickly. Come to Vane Manor by seven chimes this evening if you want to accept. If not, I'll assume you aren't interested. She smiled graciously, then left. Her sweet perfume lingered in the room. Arthur was quiet, was quiet for a while before saying, You weren't thinking of taking her offer of help, were you? Maudie paused, then she shook her head. I mean, trying to tell us Harriet's not got a worthy ship, he said. They both let out a nervous laugh, then fell silent. If Harriet really does mean to use the sojourn, well, I have seen it down in the dockyards, and it's not very big, or well maintained. It's a bit of a wreck, really, although maybe Madame Vane was misinformed. We could check, to be sure, Maudie said. Arthur took the note from his pocket and nodded. Let's finish the chores, cook dinner, then sneak back to Archangel Street. We can ask Harriet directly about the ship. I hope you enjoyed that chapter. I'll see you soon. Bye!